in the same way. Every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brother knights and ladies, good night. It's a good evening. It's good to be with all of you and to celebrate the lives of our brothers and sisters that have passed away so dear to us. As the names were being read today, I just kept saying in the back of my mind, I knew her, I knew him, I knew him, I knew her. And of course, all of you are family and fellow friends of the knights and the ladies, and so I'm sure that this was also going through, through your mind. And so it's a time of remembrance. We keep in our hearts and in our minds the good memories that we had with our brother knights and the ladies. So it's a good thing to pray for them, for their eternal repose. All of them have passed away in different circumstances. Some of them might have been under, un, uh, after a long illness, some of them after a brief illness, some of them perhaps suddenly, different circumstances for their departure from us. But it certainly feels the same because we miss them and we hold them dear to our hearts. So since November is this month in which we remember the faithful departed and on this special occasion, and since we're all night here, I figure that we could do a little reflection on how our founder, blessed Father Michael McGivney, experienced death in his own life. And this was a big part of his journey, not only as a priest, but also as a fellow brother knight. Beginning with his beatification, which was a couple of years ago, 2020, I think if in the future, anytime people say 2020, immediately something will come to our minds, right? Well, on that year that unfortunately brought death to so many people, that same year was a year of blessing for us as Knights of Columbus, because that's when Father Michael McGivney was beatified in his home archdiocese of Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, blessed Michael McGivney experienced death in his family when he was young, actually, because he discerned the priesthood and he entered seminary. But as he was doing that discernment, his father passed away. He was one of 13 brothers and sisters. How many of you had 13 brothers and sisters? If you know, you know what that is, right? Six of his brothers and sisters passed away as children because infant mortality was uh, huge at the time. Let us remember that he was an Irish Catholic immigrant in the United States. So when he entered seminary and his father passed away, um, he was afraid that he had to abandon the priesthood or so the pursuing of the priesthood for taking care of his mother and of his uh, younger siblings. By God's grace, uh, that was not necessary for a long time, and he eventually ended up becoming a priest. The fear at the time was when the breadwinner of the family would die, many times the children would be sent to an institution because these families were not able to take care of their basic needs. And Father Michael McGivney didn't want that to happen to his siblings, and so he was of great support to his mother after the death of his father. This actually is what made Father Michael McGivney uh, grow in his heart this great desire to help especially orphans and widows and to serve those who lived at the margin of society. Later on in his priesthood, he had a difficult circumstance that he had to deal with. He got to know a young boy from a local family who was going to be sent to an institution because his father had died as well. 
So Father McGivney saw himself in this boy. And so Father McGivney stood up in court as a sponsor to this boy so that the boy could stay with his mother. That was the heart of Father McGivney when he saw people experiencing death in the family, especially the death of a father. Eventually, he had a different experience of death, is that he was called to minister those who were on death row, people that had received the capital punishment, the sentence, but before that, that event took place, Father McGivney would minister to them. There was a 21-year-old man, his name was James Chip Smith, and he was sentenced to death for the fatal shooting of a police officer. For a period of time, Father McGivney ministered to this man for his conversion, his change of heart, and certainly that did happen. The sentence could not be changed. However, the ministry of Father McGivney helped the conversion of this young man. So that was another experience of death in the life of Father McGivney. While he was pastor in St. Thomas Church in Thomaston, Connecticut, Father McGivney served his parish amidst a pandemic, the pandemic of 1890. Actually, he himself died during that pandemic. He died of pneumonia in 1890. He actually passed away after his 39th birthday, two days after. He was only 39 years old when he passed away. So he certainly was a man of great virtue, and he experienced death in different ways until his own. What happened at the time is that he wanted to organize our fraternity so that we could be of support, especially to those who experience death, especially when the man in the family would have passed away. And so that's why he had this heart of charity. He died without leaving any debts, but he also died without owning a single dollar. And the reason of it was that in his heart of charity, he had given his last dollar away. This quote from Father Joseph Daly appeared in the Columbia edition of June 1900. He, in a, in a homily, he said, we may therefore, we need to gain strength to help each other in times of sickness to provide for decent burial and to render financial assistance to the families of deceased members of the order. So you can see that in his own heart, he wanted to make sure that our brother Knights would experience a good death and an honorable burial. He certainly uh, embraced the call to take care of the widows and of the orphans. And that was actually the very beginnings of the insurance um, endeavor so that families would not be completely lost without a single penny when somebody in the family uh, would pass away. And so those are the origins of why the Knights of Columbus uh, dedicate themselves to the service of insuring families. But Father McGivney didn't help those who experienced death only when he was earthly alive, but he did also beyond his physical death. Because since the endeavors for uh, making him a saint, his process of canonization, he has done many miracles. Many favors have been received through the intercession of Father McGivney, and those fall into four categories. People pray through the intercession of Father for the following. Employment, safe in their finances, safety, to overcome substance abuse, family reconciliation, and returning to the faith. 
So these are very good reasons for which we need to pray through the intercession of Blessed Father Michael McGivney. In May of 2020, the Vatican confirmed the miracle that authorized his beatification. And the miracle was given to Michael Shaho, who was an unborn child diagnosed with Down syndrome and who was miraculously cured of a fatal case of fetal high drops. This miracle was attributed to Father Michael McGivney through his intercession, and this miracle opened the way to beatification. Now we need another miracle for his canonization. So that means that when we pray for certain miracles, and we all need miracles, we need to pray through the intercession of Father Michael McGivney for his canonization. We need the miracle, and he also needs the miracle. So it's a win-win deal. How fitting, given the Order's long-standing commi commitment to the sanctity of life, that the miracle attributed through the intercession of Father McGivney was the healing in utero of an unborn child. This was the message of Supreme Knight Carl Anderson upon his beatification. A couple words about the readings of today. We hear in the Book of Wisdom that the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding passes through gray hair. And unsolid life is the attainment of all age. How ironic, because Father Michael McGivney was so young. Um, started our order when he was 29 years old and passed away when he was 38 years of age. And so certainly he showed the maturity of white hair while still, still being a young man. And it is good to remember him. Finally, in the Gospel of today, we hear Jesus is speaking about the cost of discipleship. Who of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first to sit down, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is not enough for the completion, or if there is enough for its completion? Certainly, Father Michael McGivney calculated the cost, but he knew that it was going to cost way more than what he could ever dream he could afford. But God had different plans, and God always provides. And for that reason, we pray for the canonization of Blessed Father Michael McGivney. So, for these and many reasons, I honestly cannot wait to meet Blessed Father Michael McGivney in the kingdom. Hopefully it doesn't happen too soon, but I'm looking forward to meet him. And also, I can only imagine what kind of encounter must have been for our brother knights and for our, for our sister ladies to meet him in the eternal Jerusalem. And so I pray with great hope that that encounter has taken place. And so as we see those candles in front of our altar, that our brothers and sisters may rest in peace for all eternity in the presence of God, our Blessed Mother, all the angels, all the saints, and also in the presence of Father Blessed Michael McGivney. Therefore, let us say, Blessed Michael McGivney, pray for us.